Now, what if you only have a single light? Uh, let's say, for example, you have a series of photographs you took and each one of them sucks in a different way. The top looks good here, but the back is too dark. The front looks good here, but again, the back is too dark. The back looks good here, but the front's too dark. The little logo on top looks great here, but none of them is actually a very good photograph. Well, let's take a look at stacking these images up and using layer masks to hide and reveal different parts of the image. Like, let's say we'll use, what do we got here? Stapler 1. We'll use that as our base image. And we'll say, well, the back part looks pretty good over here. We need to do something about the front. Well, let's go to Stapler 2 here. Front looks pretty good, this little top part here. I'm going to take this version here, and there's a few ways I can get it stacked onto Stapler 1. I could select all and edit copy, and then I could pop back over to Stapler 1, and I could paste that in, and you can see that appears over top there. That's one way we could do it. And once you've got it in there, there's our original stapler, and there's our new stapler, good backside, good front. How do we get the best of both of them? Well, if I put a layer mask on this top layer here, at the bottom of the layers panel, if I go to this little rectangle with a little circle in its shape and I click that, it creates a layer mask. And right now it's filled with white, meaning this is a reveal all layer mask. It's revealing this entire layer. But if I were to paint some black on that layer. So if I grab my paintbrush or B on the keyboard, make sure that I have pure black and white down here. Fast way to do that, hit D on the keyboard, gets me my default colors, and make sure this opacity is up at 100%. Fast way to do that is just hit zero on the keyboard. With that large brush, and ideally a large soft brush, a hard edge brush is not going to make a very convincing job. But if I take that hardness all the way down to zero, so you can click on this little pop-up down here, pull the hardness down, or if you right click anywhere inside the image, this little pop-up will appear and you can pull that hardness all the way down. And now I can hide, oh no, I've done the worst of everything. I can hide the badly exposed back of the stapler and reveal that better exposure down below. So basically this layer mask is hiding the badly exposed part of this layer on top. Remember the back side of the stapler here was terrible. The layer mask is meaning we can see right through to this bottom layer and we kind of got the best of both worlds. Here's the original top layer. By hiding the back part of it, we see the better part of the lower stapler. And we want a better version of the front here. Well, let's pop over to our stapler three image. Again, I can select all, copy those pixels, pop back over to my stapler one, and I can paste those on top. Give it a layer mask and with a paintbrush, again, grab a paintbrush, hit B on the keyboard. I can get rid of all the parts of the stapler that weren't very good. Or a faster way might be to fill this layer mask with black. Like if I were to hide this entire layer, if I went under edit, fill, and for contents, choose black, hit OK. This layer mask is now completely hiding this layer. So if I were to use white paint on my paintbrush, and fast way to get to your white paint, if you hit X on the keyboard, remember D gets you your default colors, X will reverse your foreground and background colors. So if I hit X again, I've got some white paint and I can bring back that better looking front of the stapler. There we go. There's kind of the best of all those different exposures. There's the bottom exposure, that background layer. You can see I can turn these eyeballs off to make the layers visible. There's the bottom layer with the nicely exposed backside, not so good on the top and front. Here's the middle layer with a better exposed top version. And here's the top layer with a properly exposed front of the stapler. Now this little medallion part in here still looks pretty dismal. What if I pop over to my stapler four image and you can even see the light source on top here. This was all shot with just one light. I moved the light around, lit the front, lit the back, lit the top. In this case here I got it really close to light up that little medallion on the top there. So let's take this one, select it all, copy it, pop back over to the stapler one and we'll just paste that in. And again I'm going to hide it with that layer mask. So we'll make a new layer mask and I will fill that layer mask, edit, fill, and for contents I'll choose black. When I hit OK, 
it all disappears. Now I can take a paintbrush, maybe a bit of a smaller brush. And again, a fast way to change the size of your brush, the square brackets to the right of the P key, the right bracket gets you a larger brush and the left bracket gets you a smaller brush. And with that white paint, I can bring back that nice shiny looking logo on top. Although I'm also bringing back some of this badly exposed area around the outside. You can see I've turned off all the other eyeballs here. By painting with white on this layer mask, I'm bringing back this overall too dark image. Well, the nice thing about the layer mask is we can always paint black or white to hide or reveal. Right now it's white, so it's revealing the entire thing. If I were to grab a paintbrush, a bit of a smaller brush maybe, and some black paint, just hit X on the keyboard, I can hide that background there. By painting black on the layer mask, we're hiding the image. So if I turn all these other guys back on, you can see that darker version around there. I'll just take that paintbrush and I can hide that too dark version. And there is a before and an after. Now the stapler looks great, but the background looks kind of miserable. What can we do about that background? Well, if I give a layer mask to the bottom layer, click the new layer mask icon, at first, I'm not going to see a whole lot. If I start painting with black to hide some of the background, I can hide this bit. You can see where I'm hiding here. We see through to nothing because, well, this is the only layer that we're seeing on the bottom. But as these other layers got stacked on top, they started hiding some of this background here. Here's a cool feature about layers. If you clip a layer to the layer below, it will only be visible where there's pixels in the bottom layer or where there's revealed pixels. If the pixels are hidden by a layer mask like we have around here, you won't see them on the layer above. So if I were to clip this layer to the layer below, and there's a bunch of ways you can do that. If you right click on the name of the layer, we can choose create clipping mask. And you can see that this layer jumps to the right a few pixels and this arrow appears pointing directly at the layer below. This layer mask is now in a way also applying to this layer up above. Wherever the pixels on this bottom layer are hidden, all around the top up here, all around the top up here, they're also being hidden on this layer. And if I turn on the other two layers and also clip them, little right click, create clipping mask, select this layer, right click on the name of the layer, create clipping mask, all of these layers are now clipped to the bottom layer. So when I paint on this layer mask, and do make sure you have the layer mask selected. See these little corner points around here? These tell us that I have the layer mask selected. When I paint on this layer mask, I can get rid of that background on all the layers. It becomes invisible. Now you might notice that the brush I'm using has a very soft edge compared to the very hard edge of this stapler here. You do want to make sure the softness of your brush matches the softness of the edge of whatever you're cutting out. So by choosing a smaller brush, if I really zoom in there, and don't be afraid to zoom in and get a good look at what you're working on, you can see that the edge of this brush, the softness, of this brush matches more closely the softness of the edge of the stapler than say this brush. This has a much softer edge. I'd have a hard time cutting out this stapler with a brush this large and soft. But by choosing a bit of a smaller brush or by increasing the hardness of the brush. If what you're cutting out has a very hard edge all the way around, you can pull up the hardness of that brush. Let's see what happens at 100%. This actually looks like it might have a bit of a harder edge than the transition across the edge of the stapler here. It might look like I'm getting overly you know, zoomed in here, but you'd be surprised how much these little edges can kind of stand out sometimes. So maybe I will pull that softness down just a little bit. And let's see how that matches up. That softness looks like it should be pretty good for this stapler here. So I'm just going to do a click. And here's a neat trick. If you hold down the shift key when you go somewhere else and click, Boink. When you shift click, it jumps boink, in between those boink points. You don't have to say boink every time you do it, but it helps. And you can work your way all the way around the product. So I'm just going to quickly run around the outside of this stapler just using that shift clicking technique. Now here's a neat little trick. If you end up in a corner where your brush is too large to realistically get that corner, you can see I have a round brush and this is a hard edged corner, 
take a look at this. If you go right past the edge and then hit X on the keyboard, right now I'm painting with black, which means that it's hiding this layer below. If I hit X, I end up with white paint, which means that I can reveal the layer below. So if I just shave this little edge off, I'm bringing back this silver part here and getting rid of that round edge where it extended past. And if I hit X on the keyboard, I'm back to black paint and I can just start working my way back up the stapler. Same thing when I get to this corner here. This isn't going to work because this large brush is too rounded. But if I go past it, X on the keyboard, shave off this little bit here, X again, and I can make my way out of that corner. And now that I've come back to where I started, I've outlined the entire stapler, I need to get rid of this whole background area. Now hopefully you don't have all this scribbly stuff back here that I did. That'll make it a little bit more complicated. But I'm going to follow a fairly simple process. The magic wand tool in Photoshop can be used to select areas of similar color. Now in this case, this background is a whole bunch of different colors, but on the layer mask, if I hold down the Option key, Alt on Windows, and I click on the layer mask, I can see it for what it is. It's just a big white mask with a bunch of black that I've painted on it. Now if I take the Magic Wand tool, and if you can't find the Magic Wand, you might have the Quick Select tool selected. But if you hit W on the keyboard, it'll take you to where that Magic Wand tool hides out. And if you click and hold, you'll get this little fly out, and there's your Magic Wand. And ultimately, I need to get this background filled with black. So I'm going to use the magic wand and click in the background. And you'll notice that it selects all of this white, well, except for that stuff. But you'll notice there's a little bit of a fringe. This makes it obvious what's happening here. If I look closer, though, here's where I use that hard edge brush on the stapler. And you can see, ah, it selected the white and anything within, in my case, 25 levels of brightness from that white there. Yours is probably set to 32. That's the default of the tool. But it didn't get this little fringe in here. It selected the white that I clicked on and anything within, in my case, 25 levels, which included these little pixels along here, but it didn't include these pixels because they're beyond that 25 tolerance. Now I could try to pull that tolerance up even higher. If I click in the white, it'll select everything up to here, but it'll never quite get everything. Here's a quick way to get around that. I can take this selection that I've made, and you can see that it's selected most of what I need except for that little fringe. I'm going to take this selection and I can expand it outwards. Right now I have this background area selected. If I expand this selection, I can jump this little marquee line, this little line of marching ants, some people call it, just a couple pixels outward. Watch this. Select, because I want to do something to a selection. Modify, because I want to modify it in some way. And expand because I want to expand that outwards. And it looks like eh, two or three pixels should do it. I'll hit three there and tell it to expand by three pixels. And when I hit OK, you can see that line jumped outwards. It jumped from the selected area further out. It expanded beyond that little fringe. Now, when I choose Edit, Fill, and for Contents, Black, and hit OK, it fills that entire background with black. Well almost all of it. It did miss a few little areas where, yeah, I had that soft edge selection in there. That expansion wasn't enough. Now I can't expand it more because this line would then jump inside my actual stapler here and that would be bad. So I'm just going to deselect either under the select menu and deselect or command D or control D if you're on Windows. We'll get rid of those marching ants. And I was going to grab a paintbrush and paint all that stuff out. So there, there's your lesson not to paint on your uh, layer mask when you're just goofing around with stuff. But I'm just going to take some black paint, make sure that it's a hard edge brush, and just, just paint over top of all that stuff. There we go. It's like it never existed. Now, if I option click on the layer mask again, I have my stapler floating magically on transparent. Now, what if the subject was supposed to be sitting on a white background? What if the client said, we want this stapler on a white background, you know, white seamless or something, and I didn't have white seamless? Well, I can easily put it on a white background. Uh, if I make a new transparent layer, now right now, if I make a new transparent layer, because I have my background layer selected, it will appear directly above my currently selected layer, which means it will also be clipped to my stapler. That's not what I'm looking for. So I'll undo that, Command or Control Z, and I'm going to go to the very top of my stack, and I'm going to click the plus sign here. This will make a new transparent layer at the top of the stack, and I will fill that, Edit, Fill, 
and for contents I will choose white. Although they want this to be the background, right now it's at the top of the stack, so it's all I see. I can grab this layer. If you click on a layer, you notice you get this little grabby hand, and I can drag it into a new position. You can change the stacking order. So if I go to the very bottom here, and I put it below my background layer, my first stapler there, I now have the stapler on a white background. Now it's not entirely convincing. I mean, usually if you've got lights shining onto a subject and there's kind of this mottled light, you would expect some shading on the background back there. Well, let's throw some shading on. I don't want to do it directly on this white layer. I want to keep it as non-destructive as possible, as editable as possible. So I'm going to make a new transparent layer. So there's this new layer that I just made. And I'm going to grab a paintbrush, so B on the keyboard. I want to make sure that I have pure black and white, so I hit D on the keyboard. And I'm going to drop my opacity really, really low. I'm at 100% right now. If I take this down to, say, 10%, and an easy way to do that, just hit 1 on the keyboard. If you need 50%, hit 5. If you need 10%, hit 1. And a soft edge brush. Hard edge brush, not going to be very convincing. So I will right click, pull this hardness all the way down to 0. And with a fairly large brush, like really large, we'll just add a little bit of shading, a little bit of fall off to the background there. Maybe a little bit in the front. Now it kind of looks like it's sitting on a white background with a little bit of, you know, some fall off from the lights back there. But it also kind of looks like it's floating a little bit, like it's not actually sitting on the surface. Let's talk about shadows. Obviously, if this was actually in the scene, it would be casting some kind of a shadow down below. Now, I've got lights from the front, from the top, and from the back, so the shadows wouldn't be very hard. Well, let's take a look at adding some shadow layers. I'm just going to call this one my vignetting layer. It's not a bad idea to name your layers as you go. This is my white background. And I'm going to make another transparent layer where I will put a contact shadow. When something is sitting right on a surface, there's always going to be some kind of a little shadow underneath it. Like if I take a look at this thing here, you can see there's this little shadow right underneath where that light just can't quite get underneath it. And we can simulate that. I'll call this my contact shadow layer. With a bit of a smaller brush, always a soft edge brush for these kinds of shadows here. And again, a fairly low opacity, maybe 20% or so. And take a look at what happens if I start painting Behind it, you won't see anything because it's on a layer that's below the stapler there, but look at what happens when that edge of the brush just kind of peeks out around the stapler. And if it doesn't quite look right, remember you've got your Control or Command Z, you can undo it. And you can use that shift clicking technique. Or you can bring the opacity up and try to do it all in one swipe, depending on your confidence level. But you can see now you have a little bit of a shadow just kind of peeking out. That looks terrible. Command Z. A little bit of a shadow just kind of peeking out from underneath the stapler there. And it just kind of helps ground it in the image. If it was actually sitting on that background, it would have some kind of a shadow down there. Now, it might also have a different kind of shadow. There's a lot of what we call ambient light. Ambient light is just the light that's in the room kind of reflecting around. And the light coming from behind wouldn't fall on the front here, so it would get blocked by the stapler here. But there's a light coming from the front that would kind of fill it in. So it would be missing some light. Well, let's make a new transparent layer here, and I'll call this my ambient shadow. And with a bit of a larger brush and an even lower opacity, I'm going to take this down to say, you know, 10%. Or actually, I'm going to go even lower. I'm going to do 5%. Now, we know that if I hit 5 on the keyboard, I just get 50%. But if I do 0, 5, there's my 5% opacity. And by using this really large, soft brush, really low opacity, take a look at what happens when I kind of brush underneath. There's a before and there's an after. It's really subtle, but it just shows that this subject, this thing, this stapler, is actually in the scene and blocking that light ever so slightly. There's before and there's after. So that ambient shadow can just kind of help ground it in the scene. The contact shadow is by far the most effective. That kind of stops it from looking like it's sort of floating over top of the background. But together, they give it a fairly natural look, like it's actually in that scene. So that's the way that you can use one single light source to make it look like you had a whole bunch of lights on the scene.